putting you to himself. I'm saying this because some individuals among the Muslims who are emotional and personally attached to individuals criticize the fact that at times we mention the names of other people involved in da'wah and other so-called scholars. And they say, brother, why you do that? You're dividing the ummah. You're this, you're backbiting. Say, Habibi, you don't understand the deen properly. This is an obligation. The fatwa of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is what? Shaytanun yad'u ilayh. He's a devil. Are you supposed to warn against the devil or call people to the devil? Are you not supposed to warn against the devil and his clan? Inevitably. And part of that is warning against deviant individuals. Now, time out. There's moderation. We're not of those whose whole life is fetching for people's mistakes. Someone who's on the sunnah, known for being on the sunnah, and we don't like him for whatever reason. He has a different nationality. He speaks English better than we do. He learned from another school. He graduated with, with a higher degree than us. People have all kinds of personal envy, envious issues. So we don't like him. So oh, let me listen now to all of his lectures. Even though he's on the sunnah, let me find the mistakes. Then I fetch for these mistakes, which any human being may do, and then we expose him. Be careful of Fulan. But Fulan is from Ahl Sunnah. Fulan is on, he has mistakes. Do you not have mistakes? You looking for his mistakes. Are you free from mistakes? If you want to point out the mistakes, no doubt. Any sheikh, if he made a mistake, will say that is an error in the sheikh's statement. We don't undermine the sheikh himself. Because no one is masoom, but the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No one is free from error, infallible, in conveying the deen, except the Messenger of Allah. So we're not going to extremes. You will notice that when we mention someone, we'll mention someone that no two sound Muslims on the Sunnah will differ about his deviance. Sami, uh, Hamza Yusuf, and uh, Kabbani, and uh, Sheikh Nazim, these, no Muslim who loves the Sunnah will think twice that these individuals are not individuals that you learn the deen from. But some other Muslims who are involved in da'wah, who may make mistakes here and there, like myself, it is not fair to go and fetch for their mistake and undermine them and degrade them in the name of something. When it's usually personal, strictly personal. I don't like him. So let me find his mistakes. Otherwise, warning against the devil is an obligation. There are 73 sects. There are other paths other than the path of the Messenger of Allah, with the shaitan calling to himself, if you don't expose him, then the average Muslim does not know any better. Specifically in this day and time. Yani at the time of the Sahaba, and the Tabi'een, and Atba'at Tabi'een, the, the predominant situation was what? The Sunnah. The people were adhering to the deen. The, those who deviated were a minority. They were a minority. So even if you ignored them, if you did hajjah, you simply abandoned them and boycott them, it does the job. But today, the, the people out there, the people in charge of the TV stations and what have, predominantly are not open to Sunnah. So the average Muslim, where will he learn? <coughs> How will he know? He may learn the incorrect information if the people of knowledge do not indicate who is the one whom you can take knowledge from and who's the one who you need to be careful about. Again, those who are deviant, beyond the shadow of doubt. Not Sunnah people with mistakes. And if there are mistakes, we make them clear. Type. Now, who are they? This, this group, this one, one group, one sect, which the Prophet ﷺ said that they will be saved. Who are they? They are the elite. They are the distinguished. They are the supreme. They are the strangers. We will see why. They are the most beloved to Allah. They are among the Muslims, the most beloved to Allah, and they are the true followers of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the ones whose love to him is the most genuine and sincere. How is that? Because you will find that every innovator will claim 
that every follower of the Sunnah strictly does not love the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You don't celebrate Mawlid, or you don't love the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You don't believe in the fabricated narration that the first thing which Allah created was the Nur of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or you don't love the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This Hadith, يعني إن أول ما خلق ربك نور محمد يا جابر. This hadith which you will not find in Bukhari, or Muslim, or Nasai, or Tirmidhi, or Abu Dawood, or Ibn Majah, none in the books of hadith. It's a Sufi fabricated narration, which is the fundamental belief of the Sufis, predominantly, that the Muhammad is the, the first thing Allah created was the Nur of Muhammad Sallallahu And he is the reason why everything was created. He is the reason, and this is deviance. And if you oppose them, they will not stop. No, no, you don't love the Messenger of Allah. Ya subhanallah. Ya akhi, we strive. We're not there. We strive to love him in the best way possible by believing in what he said and acting upon it. Not by celebrating his mawlid when he didn't celebrate his mawlid, nor did his sahaba. And not by giving him titles which he didn't give to himself, nor did Allah give to him, nor did the sahaba. He used to hate it when he would walk in for someone to stand for him. You know the mere act of standing? It's very common in the culture here. It, he, the Sahaba said, no, we, no one used to glory, used to venerate the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu more than us. And we would not stand when he would arrive due to us knowing how much he hated that. When, when people said, Anta Sayyiduna, he said, As Sayyidullah. You are our leader, you are our master. He said, Allah is the master. Because in that context, they were trying to give him something above, even though he said about himself, "Ana Sayyid Walad Adam Yawm Al Qiyamah." I am the Sayyid of the, I'm the master of the children of Adam on the day of judgment. But because he's trying to close the door for shirk, now what he's saying about himself is from Allah. When the people call him Sayyid and Allah is the ultimate master, and this may lead to shirk, he had to stop and said, "As Sayyidullah." He said, "Say what you're saying or part of what you're saying, and do not over exaggerate another hadith." Do not over exaggerate, do not exaggerate in praising me. Don't praise me like the Christians did to Jesus. Verily, I am the slave of Allah and His messenger, so say the slave of Allah and His messenger. But this is not what they do today, Ahlul Bid'ah. They give him titles like uh, uh, the, 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 the Burda, right? Uh, that what? That part of his knowledge is the knowledge of Al Lawh wal Qala, the preserved tablet and the pen part of the knowledge of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when the young girls were singing uh, that among us is a prophet who knows the right, he said, don't say that. Don't say that I know the future. Even though Allah gave him some information about the future, <coughs> he did not allow the two young girls during Eid to claim or to say that he knows what's going to happen tomorrow. This guy says, part of his knowledge is the preserved tablet and the pen. That's everything. They didn't leave anything for Allah. Wallahi musta'an. So they are those who truly love them. They are الطائفة المنصورة والفرقة الناجية. الطائفة المنصورة. منصورة from نصرة. نصر. إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح. The aid. The victory. They are the victorious group. والفرقة الناجية. And they are the saved sect. As for the reason why they were called <coughs> saved, because they were saved in this dunya from innovations and from misguidance and subsequently they will be saved on Yawm Al-Qiyamah from Jahannam. They will not go to the fire. They were saved from deviance and innovations so they will be saved in, on the day of uh, Yawm Al-Resurrection, on the day of resurrection. And in some of the ahadith, the Sahaba said, Man hiya al-firqa al Ya Rasulullah, man al-firqa al-najiyah? In some of the words of the hadith, with some of the scholars authenticated, they said, Oh Messenger of Allah, who is the saved sect? And he told them that, that whoever is upon what I am and my Sahaba. So it comes in some of the wordings of the hadith that the Prophet ﷺ, the Sahaba called them Al-Firq al najiyah the saved sect. Al-Ta'if al mansura they are victorious. Because the Prophet ﷺ said in an authentic hadith, لا تزال طائفة من أمة منصورين لا يضرهم من خذلهم حتى تقوم الساعة. They shall remain, there shall remain a group of my ummah, Mansurin, aided, supported, 
victorious, and some of the other authentic narrations, zahirin. They will be above, supreme, evident. You cannot hide them. The people of Sunnah, you cannot hide them. No matter how many deviant people are there, Allah Azza wa Jal will bring someone every hundred years that will renew and revive the condition of the Ummah with the, with the Ulama. They you will always know the Ulama. They will not cease, they will not disappear. Bi'idnillah Azza wa Jal. Zahirin. La yadurruhum man khadalahum. They will not be harmed by those who abandon them or forsake them until the hour is established. It doesn't matter if all the people of innovation call them Wahhabis and they call them, you know, this, they go to all kinds of names and warn against them. They will not be harmed by all those who warn against them, all those who abandon them, all those who, all those who disappoint them by not coming with them upon the truth. They will not be harmed until the hour is established. They will remain. Are you one of them? Insha'Allah Ta'ala. Now, let me tell you something about what Allah said about them. Just so you will know their virtue. What are their virtues? وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُمْ And the first and the foremost among the muhajireen, those who did hijrah from Mecca to Medina, and before that from Mecca to Ethiopia, and then having to return, Wal Ansar, those who were in Medina that accepted them and aided them and helped them. Walladina Tabaruhum bi ihsan and those who follow follow them exactly in excellence. Those who follow them in their ways of goodness. What is the beautiful result? Radiallahu anhum wa radu an. Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with him. Now look, look. No matter how righteous you think you are, no matter how righteous you think you are, can you say that Allah is pleased with me now? Can one of us say Allah is pleased with me? You don't have the right to do so. In fact, if you said that, that's probably the first step towards deviance. Because Allah says, وَلَا تُزَكُّ أَنفُسَكُمْ Don't praise and purify yourselves in this sense by saying that I'm pure, I'm, I'm you know, this, I'm good. Don't. We cannot say that. We hope we have good husnul dhan billah. We hope, inshallah, because of the effort, inshallah, we will receive, receive Allah's pleasure. But can any one of us give them himself a title? No, but the Sahaba, Allah gave him that title. And Allah didn't stop with the Sahaba. Al-Muhazir Ansar, Walladina ittaba'uhum bi ihsan. If you follow them on their way of excellence, then inshallah, Allah will be pleased with you as well. And if Allah is pleased with you, you know where you're going. And if Allah is displeased with you, you also know where you're going. And that's the most important thing in life. It is not about updating your Facebook. That you just had a, a, a cup of orange juice and 15 comments, you know, about, oh, with pulp or without pulp. Was it orange or was it yellowish? Nonsense. And these people, you know, it, it, supposedly it's an Islamic thing. And every five days, they put a video of some deviant da'i. And the rest of the stuff is junk, junk, junk. And if you speak to them, he will tell you, I'm, oh, I'm going straight to Jannah. Because I belong to this group. I, I belong to this, you know. Since when, since when? I've never seen the people of Sunnah, never in my life. Seen the people of Sunnah posing for pictures, never in my life. Not at, until recently. The ulama, the ulama, who may be in this situation, usually the pictures are taken, you know, by the press because of uh, authentication and documentation or whatever. But have you ever seen a scholar of the Salaf posing with a big beard and then uploading his picture on Facebook? Never, Wallah. Wallahi, na the people of the Sunnah, they don't even, they don't even uh, you know, consider this to be halal. The whole idea of taking